thanks a lot for joining us today at simplyflying.com. Tell us a little about yourself and your role at Alaska Air. I started in the mileage plan organization and uh, then moved into marketing and advertising. Um, and then uh, most recently taken roles uh, spanning the mileage plan, which is our frequent flyer program. Onboard food and beverage or airline catering uh, falls in my area as well. Advertising promotions, uh, consumer research, uh, branding and brand product. Um, and uh, it seems to me really anything to do um, with areas that other people don't want to take on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that seems to straddle a lot of functions. Is that by design or is that by chance? Yeah, you know, I think it's a combination of both. We we run pretty lean here at Alaska um, uh, Shawshank, and so we we typically wear more hats than maybe some counterparts at other airlines, even those airlines that are our size or even a little bit smaller. Um, but that said, uh, they are they are grouped um, in in kind of a common sense manner. In that, if you think about it, it, it touches most of the experiences of the, of the customers as it reflects to our brand. You know, we've often thought that uh, you know the experience is where Alaska Airlines brand meets the road, and uh, so my area and those of my other marketing uh, counterparts who are over you know business travel, leisure travel, travel. We, we really do affect uh, a lot how that experience um, is shaped, um, working closely even with departments like HR and uh, corporate training to, to, to bring that consistency and that uniqueness at Alaska Airlines. Uh, right. Um, now, what's, what's been a high point for you in the last one year in this role? Well, I'll tell you that the high point was really um, achieved not in our area. Uh, we certainly had a supporting role, but it was, it was all the operation. You right. know, in years past, we, uh, uh, I think, suffered from doing what a lot of companies do, and that's trying to do too much. Mm -hmm. And so we had strategic plans that uh, were just all-encompassing, and, and there were there were too many that you could effectively track and, and accomplish. And so last year, uh, responding to the fact that we weren't satisfied with our own operational reliability, specifically two things, our on-time reliability and our ability to deliver uh, baggage um, on time here in Seattle in about you know 50% of our traffic either emanates uh, or, or connects through Seattle. So as goes Seattle, um, uh, goes our entire network. So right. we uh, isolated that our operation was under par here in Seattle specifically and system-wide to some extent. And so our entire key initiative for 2008 was getting our operation back on track. And we did that through a, a num numerous ways, uh, organizational changes, just lots of emphasis. Um, we moved some of our programming resources from marketing, as a matter of fact, to, to the operation. Mm -hmm. And the results were, were startling. Um, we had significant increases in on time. Uh, in fact, we were first uh, in the month of June, which is um, really um, a testament because of the busy summer traffic for, uh, for that accomplishment. Our baggage time improved remarkably. All of our operational metrics um, spiked up higher, and the best part is that we were able to sustain that throughout the year, with the exception of uh, the week of Christmas, which we had debilitating right. here in Seattle and Portland, um, uh, which were a little bit out of our control, obviously. <laughs> um, but why that was so important for, for marketing and customer experience to be vested in that, of course, is that without that operation, we don't get a chance to, to really go out and talk about uh, the differences that Alaska Airlines makes, because we... We just feel that we have a promise uh, to make to our customers, and we weren't living up to that promise um, uh, enough. Um, we certainly were for most of our passengers, but for too many of our uh, in, uh, passengers, we were not getting them uh, on time and getting their bags in quickly enough. So we uh, fix those questions and or those problems, and what that allows us now is it gives us a platform and a foundation uh, to go out and, and, and revitalize um, the Alaska Airlines brand in the marketplace. I specifically... Um, with uh, reminding folks what our, our primary differentiators are, mm -hmm. and those are caring customer service mm -hmm. and making travel easier. And so you, you combine that, and uh, that, that's our marketplace differentiation. That's what drives our customer loyalty. Right. We're going to be launching a, a brand campaign here on March 30th um, in our major markets along the West Coast, um, which we'll hopefully get to that, and including uh, a new tagline, some TV commercials, new radio, outdoor, uh, the gamut, and uh, we're, we're real excited about it, and uh, our employees are real excited about it as well. Wow, I mean, that's that's brilliant. You gave me an answer to my rest of the questions, I think, because, I mean, I'm a strong believer of a brand, an airline brand is what it does and not what it says it does, and the fact is that Alaska Air is really focusing on the doing part, and then the saying part comes around. Exactly. We, you know, we've 
we, we don't spend a lot on advertising, and, you know, obviously a lot of people confuse advertising and branding, and, and we certainly have not. Um, it's been an important part of the Alaska Airlines brand history. We had a, a run of, uh, of about 17 years where we worked with a legendary commercial um, director, uh, Joseph Settlemeyer, right. who produced just fantastic uh, TV advertising for us back in the 80s and 90s. And the advertising uh, reflected and reinforced the product, and then the product did the same back on the advertising. Mm-hmm. You know, and that changed in the in the in the um, in the mid '90s uh, when we really had to readjust our product to to match the low fare competition, specifically the likes of Arena Air, Morris Air, and, and Southwest um, was the largest, of course, who who really had to change our business model. We could no longer offer those product uh, superiority that we had back then. Uh, and then so more and more our differentiation, um, which was at that time, which is now even more important now, is really our service and our, and our people. Right. We, we feel that we have a different relationship with our customers, specifically our uh, frequent flyers. But then we also have this underlying subtext, which we really haven't talked a lot about it, and that's a, it's a, it's a commitment and a passion for innovation and technology, but not innovation and technology for its own sake, but innovation and technology that makes flying easier. So, the, you mm-hmm. know, the first to produce a ticket on the web, uh, we really were the pioneers in airport kiosks. Uh, the lists uh, go on and on. We don't make a lot of noise on them. We just, we, we just do it, um, and uh, we like to think that we make the travel experience a, a little more stress-free than uh, with other carriers. Right, right, certainly. No. What's been one instant, maybe a story or a personal incident that you might remember that where you felt this whole um, relationship between the operations and the brand has paid off for Alaska Air? Well, boy, you know, it's not anecdotal. It's it's proven. We uh, we work with a customer research uh, company called Ipsos. They're based in Canada. Mm-hmm. And we religiously do customer satisfaction um, um, uh, online uh, testing monthly. And so we look at uh, a different different um, customer satisfaction metrics across the board, and we also geo, geo-target them so we know how Seattle is doing relative to Portland, L.A., et cetera. We ask the same questions every month, of course. Uh, we do have the ability to ask some fluid questions at the end, which we've done to great effect. But these questions now, we're going on our third year, uh, have given us great baseline uh, data on, you know, things like did the flight attendants um, um, uh, greet um, our customers with a, with a warm and friendly greeting? Did they right. use the name use? Uh, down to nuts and bolts things. How fast did it take you to get your bag in Seattle? Um, and all the typical customer satisfaction questions that you might imagine we ask, um, like likelihood to recommend value for money. And we produce a, a scorecard, if you will. And we've taken this to heart so much so that we actually have an employee incentive based on this. So if you wow. meet a certain metric on um, a, a group of four things, which largely have to do with the way our employees are delivering customer service, we actually pay our, pay our employees a cash bonus. Um, and this last year, we tied our operation to that. So not only was it based on customer satisfaction, but it was, taste, uh, it was based on our operational reliability and our on time. So we incented um, um, with cash um, uh, monthly payouts uh, based on both of these things. And, and last year, we ended up paying $900 to every single employee wow. because, because they delivered. Um, they delivered on customer satisfaction. Um, almost every month with the exception of two. Uh, our on-time reliability, we did a fantastic job. So we feel it's real important to make sure that, you know, we not only measure uh, the frontline uh, delivery of our customer satisfaction promise, uh, but then also, um, you know, pay it back uh, directly. Um, and so for, for us, that allows us then to go out and uh, talk about things like our, our J.D. Power Award, mm-hmm. uh, which last year we won right. in a tie with Continental. And hopefully this year we can lose that tie asterisk <laughs> and, uh, and go out there. And that's a real nice proof point for our customers. Um, and then I would also add to your, to your question, you know, we, we, we do have a very open relationship with our frequent flyers. We, we have a two-tier uh, mileage plan program, so our goals are our top level. I know a lot of airlines have a third tier. We have, we have two, and so mm-hmm. our goals our goals are very, uh, they have very easy access. They, they email me regularly. They email uh, Rick Rasmussen. He's our director of uh, the mileage plan. He has got a one-on-one relationship with, it seems like, a thousand of our top flyers. Wow. And we do um, things like we have uh, MVP gold lunches throughout our system, and we have one just about every month. Mm-hmm. We invite our top flyers to sit down and eat lunch with us. It gives us to give them some updates and things that uh, sometimes are, 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 you know, a sneak peek of, of what's happening, like a new route or something like that. But more importantly, what we do is we give a lot of time for Q&A, 
and, and just for them to to vent and to um, and to give us feedback. And the gold lunches we had in 2006 and 2007 were largely them telling us, "Hey, you know, Alaska Airlines, I love you guys. You got the best frequent flyer program in the world. You got the best people." Right. But you know, I just missed two business meetings <laughs> because you were late, and so we your act together. Right. So we, we you know, we, you, you get that feedback very directly, and you don't, you don't. It, it no longer becomes uh, Shawshank a stat on a customer research. Mm-hmm. Um, um, it, it's, you know, it, it's pulled out of an Excel sheet and put right into a, a discussion with an MVP goal who who might have just lost a big business deal because um, you know um, we right. failed to get uh, to he or she to their meeting on time. Mm-hmm. And so we heard a lot of that and. Um, we, are, we had our executives calling these golds, apologizing and listening to their frustrations. And uh, the gold lunches we've had, in fact, I was just at one last week here in um, Seattle, um, we don't hear that anymore. Um, right. In fact, we hear quite the opposite. We get, you know, thanks for, you know, um, fixing the operation. Um, for, for some of these frequent flyers, we're a big part of their lives, and we don't take that for granted. In fact, right. we heard from one gentleman from Portland who, who actually drove up to attend the, the launch. Um, a gentleman by the name of Peter Elias, and he flew on a Shawshank 250 days last year. Wow. <laughs> in, you know, between Alaska Airlines and our partner, Horizon Air. Oh, my. 250 days. So we literally see more of him than his family does. And, uh, you know, we, we, um, you know, we're we doing a much better job for him. And he is very honest with his feedback for us. But at the same time, you know, his, his praise for us was effusive specifically for frontline employees, and he can rattle off about 30 or 40 by first and last name um, just because, you know, they're so important to him. Uh, he sees the same flight attendants. He sees the same boardroom. Right. Uh, as our airport club concierge. And that's really um, that combination of that kind of qualitative first-person feedback um, combined with the, um, the data um, really gives us an accurate picture of what we can then, as marketers, then go out and, and, and talk about to, um, A, uh, drive continued loyalty among those frequent flyers, but more importantly, uh, get neutral among those who are not familiar enough with our brand, or perhaps as frequent flyers on, on, on large network carriers that are, that are looking for something which offers as much utility but with a little bit more personal touch. Right. That, that's amazing, Greg. Now... You mentioned one of the great things about Alaska is just listening to the customer and forming a relationship. One of the way, one of the means which I realize is the lunches that you have with your frequent flyers. What else have you done to hear and connect with the customers? Has social media been used, or is it letters, or how do you keep conversing with them? Yeah, we do. Um, we we do a couple different things. We have a, what's called a gold panel online. This is an offshoot of our our Ipsos customer research. Uh, last year, at the beginning of last year, we, we sent out an email to all of our golds. Um, almost all of them receive email communications uh, from us regularly, asking them if they want to participate. Uh, we had over 3,000 that say they do. And what this allows us to do, Shawshank, is just ask uh, open questions to these group of folks. Um, and we usually get a 50% response rate to our questions. Wow. So, okay. you know, these are busy folks, as you might imagine. Uh, they're traveling all the time. And yet they really do care about um, uh, what Alaska Airlines is asking um, Last year, we, we asked them quite a few questions. One of them, a very specific thing uh, I will, I'll, I'll share with you, which I don't think another airline would do, is when we, we announced our service to Minnesota mm-hmm. uh, from Seattle twice a day uh, because of some airline availability. Right. Um, our schedule department launched a, uh, or at least first filed it. We, we filed it months ahead of the, when we actually started flying it. And they, they launched a schedule, which uh, we, you know, who are closer to the customer, said, boy, I don't, I don't think that's an ideal schedule for the business traveler, and this is going to mm-hmm. be in this market. And while they kind of agreed, they said, well, this is kind of it. So, you know, do you, do you, you know, can you prove it? <laughs> Basically, right. You know, asking the marketing department to put their money where their mouth is. And so we, we called their bluff, in effect, and we went out to this gold forum, and we identified those who would have a need for this flight, and we asked them specifically, when do you need this to be? And uh, the data was conclusive, uh, and we ended up adjusting our flight times based on their input. Um, and so that's, you know, that's really putting our money where our mouth is in terms of listening to these frequent flyers. Uh, we also learned that a, great, a lot more folks were going to plan on connecting from Alaska to Minnesota mm-hmm. than we had previously forecasted. So we actually you know, worked on making sure that the, the schedule worked right. for, for connecting passengers from our, our namesake state. Right. Uh, we also have a gold panel. Uh, these are folks who are under NDA, 
Mm-hmm. And they're they're comprised of uh, we've got folks from all throughout the system, all sorts of walks of life. We have big corporate types. We have independent contractors. We have consultants. Uh, you name it. Um, good diversity of uh, age, uh, gender, everything, and uh, we get them in and we treat them like a board of directors, in effect. And wow. uh, we talk to them about, you know, uh, pro- program features. Uh, when we changed our, our program substantially last year, we went to a three-tier award structure, uh, mm-hmm. um, in- introducing a choice award in the middle of the, the, the full flex, which is obviously last seat availability and super saver. They were right there, and they helped us, uh, you know, to make sure we, we communicated that clearly. And uh, we, we talk to them about a lot of things, and we get a lot of input from them. And um, it, it kind of allows us to, to sense if there's any canaries in the coal mine in advance. Right, right. That's, that's brilliant. Now, one of the things with social media, going, going to the Internet and Web 2.0, one of the things is that it's sort of difficult to control the brand, the conversations that the consumer is having. Now, how important do you think it is actually to control the brand in this new world of consumer-generated media? Yeah, it's a great question, and I wish I had the answer to that. We um, are relatively late to the social um, networking game, um, mm-hmm. and I don't know why, <laughs> why that is. I think it's just a facet of it was just one more thing, and uh, right. and if it didn't improve the operation, it wasn't getting the attention last year. Uh, that said, we are now uh, putting a lot of attention on it. Uh, we have a, a, a group of employees, in the, it's called a Y-Gen uh, group, and they are really helping us um, um, you know, I'm, I, I think I have actually have a Ford Bronco that's older than most of these folks, but <laughs> they are doing a great job of, of making sure we're aware of what's out there. They're kind of acting as our own eyes and ears, uh, mm-hmm. spending a lot of time on their own time on these sites. But we have a Facebook page now, and um, we're looking at Twitter. You know, nothing as aggressive as right. Southwest Airlines or some other airlines are, are really, you know, they kind of... Into it. That. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, they, and I think they've done a good job with it. Um, we would want to be respectful uh, of people's time. Yes, you know, certainly. I know some airlines are twittering uh, repeatedly. We have some people here that get other airlines' twitters, and you know they've received nine or ten in a day. <laughs> and so it's it's finding that balance of of making sure that we're doing the right things. We do, you know, we're a relatively conservative company in terms of financial, um, and that's why we're in a good financial position. We've been mm-hmm. relatively conservative, and I think that has. Um, that culture has, uh, you know, is, is part of our marketing approach too, um, and I think that 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 plays a hand in that. There there is a worry about controlling the brand, but that said, we're we're very aware of the fact that you know what the brand's going to be controlled by our customers anyway. And while we want to try to guide it and steer it, and we want to manage the brand aggressively on the experience standpoint, right? You know, we can't control um, if we, you know, disappoint a customer. Um, if we lose a bag, for example, and that customer writes a scathing blog entry, um, <laughs> we, we, we can't control that. And so, you know, our lack of, of our, our, our unwillingness to capture the, the, the wave of what is social media is not going to stop any of that. So, yeah, we need to get out there. We need to have some fun with it. We are going to have a large interactive component with our new uh, brand campaign. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we hope uh, to capture as much of that, that viral power as possible. We've got a lot of fans out there, and we've got a lot of people that are passionate about Alaska Airlines brand, and what we have to recognize is that those really are our best marketers out there. Uh, right. They're, they're more effective than I am. They're more effective than, than a lot of folks here at the company. Absolutely. We, we, we hear that. We hear our, you know, our goals are oftentimes the ones selling our airline the best. Um, I'll give you a quick little anecdote in that regard. We uh, we. We recognize our million milers, which we only have, have a relative handful now. Shushing, these are actually people who've flown a million actual miles on a lot of the rise there. <laughs> so these folks, you know, have all flown us for, you know, 15 plus years hard. And uh, there was a, a businesswoman who had just crossed it um, last week, and uh, Rick Rasmussen and, and grabbed a bunch of people. And what we do is we meet these folks at their airplane. And we give them a, an engraved uh, plaque with the model of a 737-800. And wow. We give them, uh, we give them lifetime gold uh, membership and, and say some kind words about them at the gate and whatever. And uh, we tell the flight attendants in advance. So here she's rolling in at first class, and the flight attendant makes an announcement that we have a very special guest on board, a million miler. So she gets a round of applause, <laughs> you know, from the <laughs> entire cabin. And wow. What happened? Apparently what happened is she uh, she then got all these comments from these other first-class passengers saying, wow, you know, I, I've flown two million miles on American, and I got two form letters. I've thrown a million miles on United, and I got a form letter. 
And so, you know, she just said, well, you know, you go, you know you've missed the boat that you're going to be with. And then she proceeds, uh, she was an executive with a large uh, restaurant chain, and she proceeds to write an email to all of her management. Uh, this is a chain, a restaurant chain that's committed to good customer services. Mm-hmm. And she related this entire story. Uh, you know, let me tell you about, you know, a company who gets customer service and just uh, relates this growing story about Alaska Airlines, you know, and to, you know, hundreds of uh, her store managers. And I just thought, you know, that's that's the kind of viral marketing that uh, is infinitely more powerful than a, than a TV commercial. Yeah.